Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. I'm headed to Lowe's right now to get some five gallon food grade storage buckets um, because I'm gonna be putting some rice back. There's two methods that I use um, and I'm gonna show you both of those today after I go get my buckets. So I came to Lowe's to get some five gallon food grade buckets and they don't have any. They have a ton of these blue ones that are not food grade and I just don't wanna put my rice and beans in there without mylar bags. Um, so I got the lady and she helped me locate, um, they're not up here, they're on a different aisle, but she helped me locate several pallets of them. So this just tells me that people are using these big five gallon food grade buckets. Um, price has gone up on them. They are now $8.48 a piece and you can get these screw top style lids for $8.98 or this lid here for $2.48 and I'm going to show you what I'm going to get and how I'm going to use it to store food. So we found the hidden stash of food grade five gallon buckets. They're way up there. <laughs> All right, so I made it out of Lowe's with my food storage buckets. And it was funny because the guy that was operating the forklift, um, before he went and got them for me, he's like, oh, uh, so what do you have, like a restaurant or a food truck or something? And I'm like, no, just storing food. And he's like, ah, like where you're going with that, thinking ahead. I was like, yep, exactly. <laughs> so I think he knew what I was doing with them. And um, thankfully he got the pallet down and restocked the shelves of the food grade storage buckets for everybody else. Okay, so this is what I wound up with from Lowe's. They are getting pricier, so I didn't get that many, but I wound up with four of the food grade heavy duty BPA free buckets. You can tell that they are thicker than your average um, Lowe's paint bucket. And then for the lids, I just got one of the twist top kind because it was like almost $9. Now what you wanna look for in a lid, you see that black gasket there? That's what's gonna keep air and pests and anything else out of it. So I just got one of those. And then for my remaining three lids, again, they do have the gasket. This one has, you can barely see it, but it's a white gasket in there. So make sure it does have a gasket if you're storing food in it and not using Mylar bags. I am going to have to wash all of these out with warm soapy water, but today I think I'm only going to be using one for purposes of the video, so I'm just going to wash one. I have been stacking up some rice here and it just needs to be stored. So I have two 20 pound bags of long grain rice and a 25 pound bag of jasmine rice. All of this rice has been through the process of going into the deep freezer for four days and then it comes out for at least four days to completely dry to make sure there's no moisture or humidity in it. Now, a lot of people say that when they use Mylar bags, they don't freeze it. To each their own, but I still freeze it because it will get rid of any kind of um, insect larva, what are they called, um, weevil eggs. Um, you just wanna get rid of all that kind of stuff because if for some reason your oxygen absorbers fail you and there is oxygen in the environment, then those weevil eggs will hatch. So I go ahead and freeze it anyway. Um, so I guess I'll show you the two methods here, but basically these are the tools. You got the rice, you got your food grade storage buckets, and then a non-food grade storage bucket. So when I use these kind, which are much, much cheaper and thinner, I put my rice or goods in Mylar bags. So you need your Mylar bags, your oxygen absorbers. These came with this pack, but I put them in the mason jar to seal them so they're not absorbing oxygen. Um, that's definitely a must. And then bay leaves for the um, food grade storage buckets. Okay, first things first. Because I know that one of these five gallon buckets will fit approximately 35 pounds of loose rice, I'm gonna go ahead and um, do a mylar bag of about five pounds of rice. Um, that should be about 12 cups. Um, so first thing, I'm gonna go ahead and label 12 cups uh, long grain rice and today's date, which I don't know what it is, August something of 2022. <laughs> I don't even know what day it is. I'll fill that in later. 
Um, I think it's going to be easier for me to go ahead and put this mylar bag in here to kind of help stand it up. We will find out. If I can get through this process without spilling rice anywhere, it will be a miracle. Okay, so 12 cups or close to 12 cups, and that's how far it fills it up in the bag, which is just about perfect. Now, mylar bags are about the easiest thing that you can do. I have my flat iron here ready to go. If you don't have a flat iron, um, they make impulse sealers, which are awesome, and probably even easier to use than a flat iron. <laughs> But I'm gonna go ahead. Okay, so these are 400 cc oxygen absorbers and I label it on the top so I know what they are. Usually you should just be able to use one per one gallon storage bag. I use two because I think it's better to be safe than sorry. I buy extra oxygen absorbers just so I can go overboard with them. So I know my flat iron's ready. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up, put two in and then seal it immediately. There's my little pink indicator that tells me that they're good. You kind of want to do this as fast as you can because they start working immediately. So here's another one. Put it in there. Seal it up. Now try to get out as much of the air as you can. Kind of like fold it and squish it down like this. And then come with your flat iron or impulse sealer, whatever you're using, and just go across the top like this. It's really, really not rocket science and it is not difficult. This is just one of the methods that I use and I like to use different methods. Um, I like to use mylar bags and I like to use the buckets because if one of them fails for some reason, I would hate to have had stored all of my rice just one way. You know, if I have it all in buckets and something happens, those buckets get damaged, I would like to have at least some in mylar bags. So, flatten it out like that. You can see that there's a little bit of air in there. As the oxygen absorber starts working over the next 24, even up to 48 hours, you'll see it kind of suck down. Now, I put two oxygen absorbers in there. If it doesn't completely suck down and, and you know you can see the grains of individual rice, don't be scared. It's probably just nitrogen or something else that's remaining in there. All the oxygen absorbers take out is oxygen. There is other stuff in the air. So it doesn't have to look sucked down flat, but it should at least look a little bit lower than it is now. So this would go straight into one of these buckets. And that's method one. Oh, and I have included this in my other videos, but um, see these sharp, sharp corners here on the Mylar bags? I like to take my scissors and just kind of round them off because if I'm storing this Mylar bag next to another Mylar bag in a bucket and they all have pokey edges, it kind of just increases the chances of one of those bags poking a hole in the other. And I'm going to link those Wallaby Mylar bags down below. I am an affiliate with them. So if you purchase some, um, I do kind of get like a kickback. So I appreciate it. But there you go. Okay. And in my opinion, the uh, buckets that you just put the rice straight into is the absolute easiest way to store rice. Um, like I said, make sure your lid does have a gasket and make sure it's food grade because there's not, no barrier in between your food and the bucket. Now, I've washed my bucket and my lid thoroughly with hot, soapy water a couple times, and I made sure that it's absolutely, absolutely dry. You don't want to be putting rice in it when it has even a drop of water. But basically, um, 
This should be about 15 pounds of rice left in here. I'm gonna go ahead and just pour it in. Now for me, every few layers of rice, I'm gonna put some bay leaves, just what I do. I'm gonna put like three or four bay leaves in it. So you can just get these whole bay leaves wherever, Walmart. That's a couple big ones, so I'm just gonna do two. And the bay leaves, um, it's supposed to keep any kind of rodents or pests from being attracted to your food. So as you might know, rats can chew through anything. And if they were determined enough, they could get through this plastic and get to your rice. Um, but the bay leaves are supposed to deter them. So I think that was 15 pounds. I'm going to see if this additional 20 pounds will fit. It should. Now, if you are older and you can't handle, you know, 20 pound bags at a time or, um, a five gallon bucket full of rice, then get the smaller two gallon buckets or three and a half gallon buckets. Just make it manageable for yourself. See how it's kind of filling up. Sorry if it's not the best camera angle guys, doing my best. So I was right, 35 pounds of rice, perfectly to the brim with a little space to spare is what you can fit in a five gallon bucket. My house is a mess behind me, so I'm trying not to include that in the camera angle. <laughs> I have all my preps and stuff stored back there, ready to make videos. Okay, so some more bay leaves there. And the bay leaves don't do anything. Um, it doesn't change the flavor of your rice, but I actually think it makes it smell kind of good. So when you bust it into one of these, you have that little bit of um, bay leaf smell. It's just kind of nice. So you're going to get your uh, lid. This is not an easy off kind of lid. The screw type ones, you can just twist it and it comes right off. These ones are designed to just stay on for long term until you need them. And then you're going to kind of bust this plastic thing here and kind of peel back. So really it would be nice if I had a mallet to be able to put the lid on, but I don't. So I'm going to try to use my, just my body weight. And you want to make sure it snaps in really good. If you had a mallet, you would just bang it. I'm going to actually put this on the ground so I can get more leverage to get a good seal and make sure it snaps all the way around. And there we go. Easy peasy. This is stored up. It is an airtight sealed. Yes, there is some oxygen in there, but the rice will do just fine. Um, so I have these little labels and I'm going to just write down on here that it is 45 pounds of long grain rice. You want to know what's in your buckets. Don't forget to label them. And I think it's about August 28th. So I put my date that I packaged it here, not any kind of expiration date, because I expect it to last at least five to 10 years. Put that front and center and you're good to go. Find a cool, dark place to put your bucket. Don't put it up in your attic, especially not if you live in Florida or somewhere warm. Don't leave it out in your garage. Put it somewhere in the back of a closet or somewhere that is temperature controlled and you'll get the longest life possible out of your rice. Um, but that's about it, guys. I mean, two simple, simple ways. Don't make excuses that you can't do it and it's too difficult. It is very easy to put food back. You can do this with rice, you can do it with beans, you can do it with flour, um, oats, you can do it with all sorts of things. So get at it. 
Like I've said in other videos, as soon as the average person, say the guy at Lowe's who helped me get the buckets, once the average person starts figuring out about prepping and starts prepping, rice is going to go through the roof. You're not going to be able to find buckets. It's just going to be harder and harder to do. So do it now while you can. I'll see you in the next video.